seconds later. I mean, they did. Sad Boys did say they would ban OD because of Riolia, which it's I don't know. not. Yeah, they're. I don't know what they're doing. Baiting it. It looks like. I think every series we've seen, for the most part, OD has been first two banned against Black and Yellow. Is Puck yeah. just that much better? I mean, Puck is picked first here by Sad Boys. They don't show typically a lot of flexibility to say that, oh, it's a flex pick. This is more like, a, you know, EG Quincy, we're getting our mid pickup kind of early and making it work because it's such a top meta hero. I mean, now, no OD. That question's thrown out. Looks like Void Spirit comes out. And, uh, you know, as we've already seen in our previous series, Void Spirit versus Puck. This is the best of the best inspired of the middle right from, now. Inspired from the Abed performance last game, picking it up really early. Uh, could be like a PPD thing where he's like, you know what? Because I'm sure there's some, some, I don't want to say bad blood, but there's some competitive spirit there between him and EG just in general because of the history. Wants to show him that, hey, my mid laner. I mean, hey, remember when, better than yours. remember when Moon Meander was on here for his winter interview? He said, oh, they were just doing some of EG stuff, you know, implying that yep, PPD true. takes a bit from EG based on their scrim play. You know, I don't know how much you want to read into that, but that's just what was put out there and here they segue into a trusty old Enchantress support pickup. I mean, you already know, though, that the offlane is going to be a Tibber Saw. You don't have to fear something like the Beastmaster, but they still want to have a bit of lane dominance with the Enchantress regardless. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, it's it's okay versus the Timber because you have the pure damage as well as, like, you know, certain creeps will do magic damage. You can get, like, the Wildkin. It's pretty annoying. You can get the, uh, the Seder, things like that, so... I think still, if you're sad boys, you want to pick like one extra thing that does some damage to Timber. Uh, if Jug wasn't banned, that would look pretty good. Obviously, like the Monkey Kings and Ursas would be great, but those are both banned out. So we're going to need to pick something that's a little bit strange in the safe line. Maybe like a Morphling might be okay. Hmm. Morphling? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know how this... I don't think... Does Bloodseeker lane okay against Timbersaw? Because I know mid to late game yeah. is obviously good. Honestly, it's 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 not a bad Bloodseeker game. Bloodseeker carry actually does dumpster. Good against this hero as well. Right, we've been seeing a lot of bans on these, like, tanky melee uh, counter pickups. Like, your Ursa's gone, Monkey King, Viper was already taken off the table. I would be surprised if we're not going to see, like, Alk or some other raid boss continue to come out here. I'm I'm honestly, like, I feel like you're just asking to get OD'd right now. Like, you've Timber Troll. Maybe just say, screw the Rubik. Hey, Earth Spirit, can you go silence this guy so he doesn't steal Astral? And then OD just insta-kills Troll because he's the lowest in-game hero in the game. And then OD is, is a classic counter to this Timber Saw hero. You just so much pure damage. Remember that Sad Boys have pulled out, what, Razor in the past? to counter against the troll and there's the od you're talking about so they get that uh for well off lane i guess yeah yeah probably i mean o od earth spirit right like you just set you set up for the role like even with level one astro which for a lot of heroes it's like terrible setup but for earth spirit he's like okay that all i need is 1.25 seconds and i'm good i'm on top of them so and then in the game i mean it's just the best od game ever other, other than the rubik like rubik's really the only issue leave earth spirit to silence and puck So what position do you think this is though for OD? Offline. The one I think or the three? I think it's I think it's three. It just Earth, Earth Spirit. It's just so easy to lane with Earth Spirit. You're gonna dumpster the troll in lane. So like it's way too easy of a lane. I think if you're black and yellow and you're trying not to lose this game, you're thinking of like aggroing the troll or sending it mid or something like that. I, I really don't think you just lane this straight up with the OD. And this is Moo. I mean, this guy invented OD. Like he was literally the first guy that was picking this. I, I legit think if black and yellow lanes the troll versus the OD, they lose. I think I think it's that simple. What is Sad Boys sensing here? They ban out the TA. So this Void Spear is potentially going to be the four position, or at least they think it could be the four position Void, and that a mid is still to come. Yeah, that's true. Very intriguing. Yeah, definitely some flexibility on that side. I think from Sad Boys' perspective, obviously looking for a position one, I think Ricky might be the best pick right now. Uh, just looking against the matchup uh, versus Troll. Pretty damn good mid to late game. I feel like you want with an, with like, with an OD, maybe you want something that's like a little bit more uh, fighty than like a Ricky. Like maybe like a Morphling, you know? You could just run at them with some magic damage shit. You're going to have a good lane versus the Timber. You also have this like last pick versus the Timber. I, I feel like you can just have a really solid lane. 
Still banking on potentially a mid laner to ban out the Ember. So you have no spirits. The puck's already gone. You know, they already have Void. Bat Riders banned. Storm Maybe. is still. That's the spirit. That's right. That's right. Storm is kind of, you know, next in line if that's what they're anticipating. And PBD really thinks that there's some, like, crazy bait and switch going on here. Yeah. <laughs> That is that is interesting. He's just like, okay, this is the only way we lose with this draft is if they do some crazy bait and switch. And they're into spitting a raid boss type hero in the Medusa. Uh, other options still include, you know, the Alk. But uh, Alk versus Timber is not good. What in but... God's green huh. testicle? Wow. What? Okay, Giant well, Hunter. we haven't seen him in a while, but that's a really good against Timber Saw. Oh, yeah. Really. Okay. Good. Okay. I like this. I like this a lot. So they're doing a, a troll mid. Okay, I, I like this a lot. I, I figured Black and Yellow had to do something like this. Uh, this Wraith King actually dumpsters OD and Lynx. You just throw, throw skeletons at him. Okay. Mm. Fun fun way to round you things know, out for Sad Boys, but Black and Yellow get the final say. What, what do you got, Suns fan? I, I genuinely think Sad Boys is a better team, but I like Black and Yellow's draft way better. I, I think Gyro is just terrible, just as a hero. I mean, he's good against Timber Saw in lane, but after that, I don't know what he brings to the table. You know, I'm still going to bank on the fact that I think this is a really good OD game. I I, I trust in the, the Moo OD. I'm going to go Sad Boys. All right. We're still split at the panel here. That's some hype stuff. So why don't we go ahead Thank and you, Jenkins. get into a break. And when we come back, we have Lyrical and Gods back on the mic. Hello and welcome back, friends. We're here for our second series of the day. It's going to be, of course, Sad Boys versus Black and Yellow. Gods, we've kicked Owie to the curb. He's out of here. No longer going to be around. Uh, but we still got some great action today. You feeling good about this one? You like the drafts? Good. Yeah, I like in both drafts. We're seeing something different. You know, EG Quincy had this kind of defined pool of heroes they want to stick with, and these teams, totally new ideas. You know, I'm missing Aoi. He was teaching us a lot. You know, giving me lots of good ways of thinking about Dota, which I don't often do. He just has a very unique perspective. So I'm, uh, I'm in the deep water here. I'm with you. We're gonna get, we're gonna swim through it together, though. You know, we can hold on to each <laughs> other. We'll be each other's life preservers. <laughs> Uh, I don't think we kicked him out. I think he decided, you know, he's only going to show up for the EG Quincy series and everything else. He's like, eh, you know. I just, well, you know, I wanted to put it out there. I wanted to try and make it seem like we were the ones in charge. But yeah, you're trained. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so GLFH is going to go on out there as we did have a quick pause uh, as I think that it was Flea that was disconnected for a moment. But he's back into it now, starting off on that Rubik. And the Gyrocopter, a little bit of a weird answer at the end, but Fear playing back on it again. Uh, if I do remember correctly, I feel like this was a hero that was pretty popular around the time that guy won a TI. <laughs> That's true, yeah. The old TI4 Gyrocopter meta. Uh, every single game this hero was being picked. It was the go-to carry. Back then it was, what, CDC on aggressive? Who kind of popularized this? TI5. Sorry, yeah, TI5. Yeah, yeah, of course. TI4, forget about that one. <laughs> um, yeah, TI5 aggressive played this kind of innovated how to play the carry role as this like hyper aggressive active player rather than this let's sit and hit creep. So we'll see if that's going to be the approach Fear takes here. I think the gyro is being picked up primarily because it's a pretty good lane matchup against the Timbersaw. Um, they didn't really have a good timber answer, at least in lane. Puck is like, not bad against the timber, but uh, the gyrocopter gives you a way to really bully and threaten kills against timber in the landing stage. Yeah, absolutely. That rocket barrage can just be pretty devastating and early points in the homing missile as well. If he steps too far out, he's going to get punished. Uh, but already starting three heroes up top as Snake King and PPD are here. Would imagine that at least one of these two is going to head back. Um, I, I, I have a feeling, I mean, the, the trial lane felt like it was kind of around a little bit last series, and we know that from the panel talking about it, the PPD likes to sometimes uh, imitate a bit of what they're doing as well. Do you think there's any chance that they try and do a full-on try lane? Um, I think they would try lane the gyrocopter, so I, I don't think gyrocopter can play without support. Yeah, they're going to TP PPD down here. Okay. Um, this is not like a, I think the reason the try lane worked is because you had Ice 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 as an offlaner playing favorable matchups this time around. You've got to give Gyro a good lane. True enough. Well, you can see that Jubei heading up top now as we're looking at the mid. Uh, Troll versus Puck, but uh, playing on this Void Spirit, already starting with the Resonant Pulse, just trying to have an okay time. But with double melee and facing off against an OD, this could maybe get a little bit testy here. Yeah, they're getting right up in their face Ooh. here. Snake King actually going to miss the Boulder Smash onto Yamsun. They're trying to get aggressive onto him. Yeah, a little bit of a surprise he missed 
that one, but Mu, not done. Constant harass coming out from his OD. Until Wraith King gets those points in the skeletons and you have those summons to kind of play the lane with, this is a pretty hard matchup for Black and Yellow. Yeah, it's going to be a bit tough there. Uh, as you can see, just the constant spam of those uh, arcane orbs keeping the pressure on. Down bottom, there was a homing Ooh. missile that was able to hit earlier to get the side So bolt. really... I, I really like what Fleet did here. Usually against the Enchantress, you block the big camp from spawning. But once he saw PPD had Impetus level 1, he lets the big camp spawn. Then he does a side pull. So PPD will hit level 2. He will get Enchant. But then from here on out, that side camp will be blocked. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it's actually killing off the entire wave almost. Or at least doing a good amount of damage to it, which pulls this one back pretty freaking far underneath the tower yeah. with zero. And he gives zero the solo XP. Like getting Timbers level three as early as possible is really important for him in most lanes. So I, I think what Flea's done here is really good for securing Zero's lane. Nicely done. At the same time, Gyro's free farming and Gyro level three has a lot of kill threat with the magic damage. Yeah. Definitely need to watch out for that one from here if they step just a bit too far forward. Uh, we were sort of talking a little bit around the mid lane, but Royoya off to a pretty hot start, 12 and two versus the nine and one on DNM. Uh, but a bit of a weird matchup, and I think just it doesn't feel like a Rayoya hero, really. Yeah, something... I, I think they felt they had to switch it up. They didn't want to play the troll into OD in the lane. Um, so we'll see how Rayoya does. He's definitely laning just fine here. DNM, one of these young new mid, mid players, used to be a carry, but has shown pretty good skill in the mid lane throughout the DPC. So uh, I would definitely give Rayoya a slight edge based on his experience as a mid laner. He's, I doubt DNM's played much Puck versus Troll in the mid lane, for one thing. Mm. As you said, doing an okay job of it so far. All lanes right now going for like either a slight to a you know, decent size edge, actually in the favor of Sad Boys, as DNM is uh, starting to catch up a little bit here on Royoya. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, even with Flea's nice little place to control the Wave Equilibrium down bottom zero, still having a rough time getting last hits. Mm. Even getting a couple denies there, messing around with his farm, not able to get the last hits through there. Uh, very frustrating, I'm sure, for zero. But as a coin blade, we'll see how he does. And really not all that much action to write home about at these early goings. Everybody just kind of content to get their farm, slight leads here and there. Uh, and maybe around this four minute mark, we're going to see these rotations come over for the, the rune spawns. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this this Void Spirit 5 position. Uh, we'll see how it works out for, for Black and Yellow. Uh, we've definitely seen it be successful as a 3 and a 4 in the past, but the 5 is uh, maybe a bit of a stretch. Nice mm. Invis rune secure from DNM. He grabs the rune as he's orbing away, so he grabbed the rune against two heroes. That was actually very important for how this mid lane goes. Yeah, Roya is now maybe going to need to have somebody else come and refill his bottle or something. Uh, obviously, 5-minute mark's coming up fairly soon as well, so that could be another... Thing that you could just go for uh, but we'll have to wait and see in the meantime zero he's been able to get level four with flea giving him pretty much solo xp uh and should be able to stay in this one without too much concern now two points up in rocket barrage but i don't know there's just not really enough damage it feels like yeah that maybe level five on the gyro could be possible but yeah he's got almost a thousand health now as long as he's full health i don't see a way that fear can kill him Rocket Barrage is just, this is a spell that's received way too many nerfs over the years that uh, there's a reason Gyro is not picked because this hero used to dominate the laning stage. Now, if anything, the laning stage seems like one of Gyrocopter's weak points. Yeah, and maybe going to need to try and play more around stacks or something else that comes out eventually. But Sad Boy's uh, going to be able to get three bounty runes, it looks like. And definitely not great for black and yellow. Yeah. And the fourth one, even though Black and Yellow picked it up, Ryoya couldn't bottle it because uh, PPD sent a creep there with his Enchantress. So the Rubik just had to grab it before it got denied. So really nice play from PPD, even though he doesn't get the rune deny. Wow, and Ryoya's just been sitting here mid with an empty bottle for a cool minute. Uh, and obviously nobody dying, which means nobody going back home, which means no chance for the refill. Frustrating stuff for sure uh, for that mid laner, at least for the moment. As oh, they go in top, top. But there's a big creep wave, nice kick, but the creeps are tanking the tower shots. That keeps the sun alive. It was out the secondary stun now on to Snake King. Now the tower is hitting him. The pullback, it's going to connect, but Snake King not going to be chased down here. And in fact, the rotation from DNM with that coil, that's going to be enough to find the kill. First blood, drawn by the puck.
Yeah. And that's an advantage Puck should have over this troll mid, is that Puck is just a hero that can rotate. We saw how important mid rotations are in the last series, as bottom lane zero gets very low, but you've got kind of this double carry lineup on the black and yellow side. Really, in some ways, three carries. Like, Timber's not a carry, but he's not a hero that rotates. It feels like black and yellow have gone a bit kind of static with their three cores, none of whom want to make plays on the map. Static for sure. Uh, they at least were able to find a quick kill there uh, onto the courier. So Moon not going to have his meteor hammer, but Jubei misses on the Aether Remnant. And now he's going to get punished for this one. The chase down is coming. Moo is there for the right clicks and does not need the meteor hammer to find that kill on the Jubei. Yeah. I think we're going to be probably seeing the Wraith King have to head back to the jungle fairly soon, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does feel like the jungle is going to get contested by black and yellow themselves. Ryo is probably thinking, I need to head back to the jungle at some point. So I I'm wondering which of these two cores, Wraith King and Troll, is going to be more of the playmaker. I think it just sort of has to be Troll. Like Wraith King's job this game is just to build a Radiance, but uh, the Troll is just not a hero that easily makes play. So there's a lot of pressure on Ryoya to do some special things on this hero. Yeah, I I'm curious what he's going to go for. Uh, looks like he has the Ags queued up. Uh, early on, which could be kind of neat. I, I wouldn't mind seeing that one necessarily, but uh, yep. probably pressuring towers is going to be the better look for him. As you can already see, uh, Mu trying to do it pre the finished Meteor Hammer as DNM just backs away, tanking that tower so the catapult up top can get the extra pressure onto it. Black and Yellow want to defend. They TP and flee, but they're very under level. Both their supports are level three here, so. That's the problem. If your cores can't make plays, it often the pressure and the burden falls on your supports, but until they get their levels, like you need Rubik with spell steal, you want Void Spirit to have level six, so he's got that initiation. It's hard to make those plays. Uh, yeah, yeah, getting a little bit testy again in the mid lane, but it's just gonna be a bottled regen and DNM backs away again. So these moves just come in a bit too late from black and yellow and sad boys, you know, remaining strong and fine in each of these lanes. Yeah, it's I'm just kind of scratching my head of like, what is the move to make? Because their only real initiation is a telekinesis at this point. So I think they're forced to play this farm game, which is where if you're if you're someone like DNM, you're just like, man, I can make plays anywhere on the map. You don't have to counter gank because there are no plays that Black and Yellow make. And this is the play that they're going to make. Easiest kill in the world as they take down zero. Just a four person smoke up and uh, heading down bottom. I mean, this this is, like you said, the scary part is that you can do whatever you want. You don't have to rotate. You don't have to respond. Make the moves yourself. I think the good news is, if you take a step back, though, is that Black and Yellow, they're still even on gold. They're down three kills. But if they can somehow just get away with this greedy style, things could look pretty good for them. If Troll finishes an Ags, Wraith can get a Radiance, then they'll be ready to fight. But for the next five minutes, Sad Boy's likely going to be pressuring a lot of these towers. And it already comes out right at the beginning. They've got the centaur nearby as well. Uh, I believe that this is going to be just one component of the Aghanims that's queued up right now for fear. Uh, he has one of them being flown out to him at the moment. But tower drops and the pressure. We'll see if they keep on going with it. Uh, they see this ancient stack too. Only two creeps. They're so strong now. They've got the meteor hammer on OD. So they've got a really strong initiation from OD. They've got the puck coil as a amazing ganking tool you've got an earth spirit who's level six oh like everything is there that you need to fight on the sad boy side right, yeah yeah i'm gonna be able to get the d word going but now jubei likely gonna drop as they try and chase down they won't be able to connect onto that troll five <laughs> heroes up on their triangle it does set up for a lot of bounty runes to be gained maybe for black and yellow here yeah that was good for black and yellow. They lose just a five position. Normally you see Void Spirit and you're thinking core. No, that's a five position Void Spirit. They get two bounty runes so far. They could maybe even grab a third if they invaded, but not sure they will. But they're doing okay considering how damn greedy their lineup is. I, mean, I keep on saying it, but that's really what it is. This troll racing Timbersaw, they're in an okay position. Right. Well, and the question is, can they remain there as well? Uh, you know, the, the 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 impending sense of dread is the, this early pressure that they've got. But get level six on Jubei. This is pretty nice here. PPD forced to pop the heal. Got a little bit of a chase down. Jubei can't quite get in range. And meanwhile, it's bottom where they're trying to set up onto this timber saw. Stun is going to connect. Fear in the area gets the rocket barrage and zero dead. That one hurts. That's what sad boys need to do. It's just 
set up these kills using Mu as, Mu as well as Puck. He, he and DNM need to make these plays. Uh, Fear is going to be probably looking to farm, but the thing with Gyro is you don't normally out-farm most carries in the game. That's why Fear is playing pretty active right now, because he doesn't feel like he can keep up with a jungling Wraith King or a jungling Troll. Well, he would definitely be right about that. <laughs> but... It's much more this even distribution of net worth when you look at the Radiant. All three of their cores having a good game, whereas Black and Yellow, Troll, having a great time in the jungle, Wraith King having a pretty good time. But this Timbersaw, I don't think, is going to have a very good game. No, he has uh, already been ganked twice, I... died both of them. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think the way Black and Yellow win this game is probably Zero just has to keep going bottom and f forcing Sad Boys to react to him with rotations. He's going to have to die five, ten times in the first 30 minutes in order to create enough space for his cores to farm right can't be afraid to, to lose your life a few times there yep well lift. nice lift Ooh, into the remnant very well played is snaking nowhere left to go he ends up falling he'll even kick yep. them away afterwards it does set up a dd rune up top for dnm and we'll see what his next move is going to be getting closer and closer to that witch blade Ryoya does look to be committing for the Aghanim Scepter as his first I item. Just a fighting build, which I'm totally on board with. I don't think you can go... You can't go Battle Fury when you've got a troll on your team. Uh, uh, sorry, a Wraith King on your team jungling it up. Or even the Maelstrom seems too greedy, so he's going to go pure fighting. Now, you mentioned this, bringing a lot of heroes down bottom, but this is what Black and Yellow are going to try and do, is force the issue. TP coming in right now from the Puck. DNM shows up, Coil there. On to two, roll afterwards from Snaking. Going to try and get the silence onto both, and now chasing forward for zero. You get a good Chakram out there afterwards. Really in very deep. And try to TP out. Oh, the roll wasn't on target. Snaking oh. predicted, but he predicted wrong. Yeah, he... Pre-rolled, right as he started casting his roll was when he went for the TP. Can't really blame Snaking for that one. And Sad Boys only get a Rubik. It's kind of felt like deja vu to when they lost Jubei at their bounty room fight. Like, they lose one support, but create a lot of space for their cores to farm. They're only down 1k gold. This is, you know, it's still Sad Boys in control. They're still the ones who can make all these plays and continue to pressure towers with the Meteor Hammer, continue hunting for kills with the Puck OD and their aggressive supports, but black and yellow are keeping it close. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the way that you're describing it makes it sound like right now, sad boys have this window where they can get a lot done, but if they don't get a lot done, then they could be in a little bit of trouble as the game goes on. Is that, is that yeah. fairly right? Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. I, and I, if anything, I think sad boys were a bit slow to take all these out of towers and have, I, I would have expected them to have like a three to four K gold lead right now. So black and yellow are playing very well. Oh, couldn't quite get that tower. It was actually the uh, the enchanted creep that got the last hit on it. PPD. How much damage those things have? I guess that he's got two points up in enchant, so that helps. Yeah. I think the one thing for Sad Boys is, you know, as much as they're not super under pressure to make all these plays happen now, because I think they still scale very well. It's very right. much just like Black and Yellow's lineup is only good with items in the like mid to late game, whereas Sad Boys is good early, mid, and late game. I feel like they have a much more well-rounded draft. Okay. Six to one so far, and we are getting close to that radiance, uh, or at least the relic being done on Yamsun. And then, of course, Troll Warlord halfway, a little bit more than that, towards the Aghanim Scepter, uh, which again just allows him to get those dispels, whether aggressive or uh, defensive. Yeah, we'll see how that works for him. And the, the lower cooldown is really nice if you want to be this aggressive fighting troll. Vision-wise, there's been uh, some pretty good wards placed down in the Radiant Jungle by the Dire. Uh, there is one good Radiant Ward up on this high ground over here, which is going to scout Jubei moving through the woods. So getting some vision uh, and able to steal Astral now for Flea. That's a great grab. Oh, yeah. Playing Rubik and OD. Always a, a free steal. Oh. Does, uh, offensively, Astral, he's got backup. And I don't know. That yeah. was bizarre. <laughs> yeah, I think he felt Moo was alone, but uh, Sad Boys were just camping that hill. I, I like what Sad Boys have done. They, they've gone from prioritizing, you know, hunting the Timbersaw down bottom. They just let Timber take the bottom tier one tower because they wanted to take over the jungle because Wraith King and Troll were getting way too much out of having both the top jungle and their triangle of camp. So taking away this top jungle is going to slow down the farm that Black and Yellow are getting. And I think they're kind of 
adjusted because it was, it was in hindsight probably a mistake that they put all that emphasis on the bottom lane. Mm. Well, and you know, that, that adjustment is what you need to do if you're sad boys. Get yourself set up to farm out the map a little bit more. Uh, while this is happening, they're kind of getting close to their timing. Uh, Yamsum now heads back towards the Ancients, going to farm these ones up. They get the D ward on the camp that was blocked. Uh, and I, I think that at this point, if you're Black and Yellow, you just need to wait for those items. They're so close to finishing them off. 50 gold away from Ags, and then, uh, what, about a, less than 1,000 gold for the Radiance. Yeah. I'm curious to see if they, like, immediately try and fight with those items, or if they feel like they're going to need, you know, usually Radiance is like this farming item that you want to get one more item with before you fight. Like, maybe you go Blink Dagger. Um, we'll see what Yamsen does, but it's not like they necessarily instantly have a better team fight because of those items. They still have big initiation problems. Their only real initiation is going to be that telekinesis still. Right. Yeah, pretty big problem there, for sure. And speaking of which, uh, the roll, looking for initiation down bottom, they want to try and find Zero again, who has been farming slowly uh, towards yeah. this Yule Scepter, but snaking some eyes on him. Goes for the jump away. Snaking gets the silence, the slowdown. DNM shows up, and the rest of the heroes move into position for black and yellow. They try to initiate onto this timber saw, but everybody else is here now and in trouble. They take down yeah. DNM. Royoya now looking for more. He has his ags delivered to him. So they get the astral now on to the OD. Gonna be able to follow that one up immediately, blowing up Mu. He gets demolished. So a great couple of kills there for black and yellow. Yeah, having a soul and astral actually ends up being a really sick setup for the Aether Remnant. Like, usually you think, you know, this Void Spirit as a support is going to be getting a really late Yules, but he might not need it anytime soon, and he's actually pretty far because of the astral setup. So, really good fight for them. Recognizing that Puck DNM kind of overextended with Troll there, he's just able to turn, fight, get some roots off, and Black and Yellow now have a gold lead here, and they're in a really good spot. Yeah. Setting up for maybe a move here towards mid. I mean, again, it's like, it's so scary because that last fight was without the gyrocopter really being involved at all. He does have the Aghanim Scepter done, getting pretty close to having Maelstrom done as well. Uh, we'll have to Ooh. see, but another Ooh, Remnant Astro. gonna land now, pulling back onto PPD, and he's gonna die too. Snaking rolled in a bit. They're gonna buy back now on PPD, wants to get into this fight. They have another round of ulti drop down onto his head. Royoya in trouble, but pops the ulti. Another round of Astro. Moo controlled. Moving in the damage from Zero. Control still living through this one, but getting very, very low. DNM almost going down yet again. Chase down from Jubei looking for the finish. Can they get it in time? Snaking going to drop on the other side. They brought back to life Yamsun. And now another banishment coming from this Rubik. I mean, these Astrals have just been devastating. Die back. Yeah. It's so much damage is the crazy thing. Like the Astral itself does 360, the guaranteed remnants another 230, plus you get like a Dissimilate on top of it, a Chakram on top of it. It just blows up anyone who gets caught. And the hero, wow, 2.4K damage dealt by Rubik in that fight. Troll as well, just constantly spamming out the axes on such a low cooldown. It just, it was brutal. And Mu. Mu's caught mid. Yet again, caught, controlled, and well, they're not gonna fully commit to that one. As Snaking moved back into position, Jubei gonna be saved for a moment by Flea here. But low on mana, they realize they can't fight anymore, yeah. Yeah, Flea with the Aether Lens, and now a Philosopher's Stone, such a great item to have. A hero like Rubik, who can be fairly item dependent, his impact on a team fight, if he can get a, you know, Blink Dagger, Four Staff, would be huge. So, Black and Yellow are playing some incredible Dota right now. Now. Yeah. This, this Rubik pick, I, I, it feels like it's gotten better and better as the league has moved on. You know, we were talking about Earthshaker yeah. and how broken it was, but then we saw, uh, you know, when A-Team were, were playing that, that they ended up picking uh, Rubik as an answer, and it's working fabulous here as well. It's an answer oh, to the yeah, OD. Bottom. And Ulti is there. Does get the silence off, though, beforehand. And now Jubei looking for a pick. Going to be tough to make it work as Mu just gonna walk away from him. DNM has a TP, he's not gonna go for it, recognizes they're not chasing him anymore. Nice kill on the troll, and it looks like uh, Black and Yellow's response is just gonna be to kind of farm their side of the map. Wraith King has Radiance, he's got a BKB next queued up. Radiance, BKB, Wraith King, there is no real good answer to this. Sad boys are so magic damage heavy. Even Gyrocopter, he's gonna be very magic damage to rely on himself. As a Yules. Lift up, roll, gonna be off the mark. Tries to jump away, silent there, but save. 
flee, keeping them alive. This is going to be a big hit on everybody if they're not careful. The ulti drops down from the gyrocopter. Fear still thinking about diving in on this one. So the missile is going to land onto the timber. But again, the, the astral on Rubik, like you have to focus this guy, I think. I agree. Uh, it's just too impactful, but he has so much cost range. That's the crazy thing. And this is before he's even leveled up Arcane Supremacy. He's only got level one on it. Yeah. It only gets harder, and here he is setting up mid. Gotta be careful there. The combo comes out, and Moo caught yet again. Lift up Yules as Snake King tries to find his way out of this, but Sad Boys are just getting ran at. Black and yellow came to play. There's no easy buckets in that ADPC. It, you know, it took them a while, but here they are in their last best of three. They're fighting for survival. If they don't win this, they are eliminated. They're going down to the lower division, but Black and Yellow are finally kind of, I think, living up to the expectations that we set for them. We thought this would be one of the teams that could surprise people, and they're definitely doing it so far here in game number one. I mean, I don't even know what all the implications would be. If Sad Boys lose here, it feels like it's just <laughs> some mayhem I, world. Yeah, I think the main one is for the bottom. It'll force a three-way tie between um, a few teams. Oh, sorry, right. a two-way tie. It'll force a two-way tie between Black and Yellow and A-Team. A-Team beat Black and Yellow, but they'll have to play a tiebreaker match if right. Black and Yellow win this. Again, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but Black and Yellow looking really good in this game, number one. Eight to eight so far uh, on the scoreboard, and a lot of it off the back of Flea just playing a really fabulous Rubik here uh, in game number one. I mean, everybody's playing well, but he's sort of the yeah. engine making this all work for him. They still got a very farm gyrocopter to deal with. Fear looking to go for the BKB next. That's kind of the big timing for him. He's going to have a lot of damage output with the Ags Maelstrom BKB. PPD sends in his creep to go and get the D ward action moving. And the smoke up that came from Sad Boys, they tried to take over the top side of the map. Uh, looks like they're going to be able to get a couple more D wards along the way here, but it looks like it's pressure down bottom where black and yellow want to play towards the tier two. Yep. So perhaps allow them to fully take over this bottom jungle, take the outpost if they want. Doesn't seem Sad Boys are defending it. They're going to go for Roshan. It's Beans. And I believe, and yeah, Dyer can maybe make their move over there, or will they just give it up for free? Right now, they're TPing top to push out the lane, and I think they're gonna, you know, they're gonna get here in time, but there's only three heroes. They do not have numbers. Really weird. It, it, it scanned first and hit, and then it didn't scan the second time. Banish for the moment. Chakram goes out, trying to hit the combo, not gonna get it perfectly, and a Yule nice Scepter heals. keeps Void Spirit fine and dandy. They see how yep. low Roche is, and now Yamsun's moving in. It. They got the setup. The Remnant is going to connect. That is caught on to move. BKB, no answer in the world. Yule Scepter lift up afterwards. Jubei doesn't have another remnant for another couple of seconds. Tries to throw it out, and the coil comes out, but it's not before they're able to catch him. Look at all of this damage onto Radiant as Fear is getting absolutely walloped. Double kill for Jubei as they chase forward for more. Everybody pretty much is alive. They finally get the troll, but they bought back on the puck for this, and DNM now might be in trouble as well. Goes yep. for the jump away, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Lift afterwards, a triple kill for Yamson as all of them die. They killed six heroes. They just lose their troll. Black and yellow just manning up at the Roshan pit. Three heroes just charging in alone. Three versus five, buying time for the backup to show. When I saw Yamson TP top to a tier three tower, I'm like, okay, they're just giving up Roshan pit. That was incredibly bold, and it pays off big time from black and yellow. Man, so clutch. And, you know, talking about the way this game looks now, uh, 10,000 gold lead. They gave the Aegis to the Timber, um, which I guess is not too surprising since they just maybe feel like Yamsun isn't going to die with that BKB. Must be the yeah. idea here. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, Wraith King is just not a good target. If Troll was alive, I think you'd definitely give it to him. But, yeah, I guess with the Troll dead, they decide Zero is the best target. I'm not a big fan of Timber Aegis, but... Can't say I'm a big fan of... I mean, I think Wraith King personally would have been better. He's got a branch and a gloves. He could easily slot it in, but... Right. Not a big deal either way. This does feel a bit like it's going to be a farming Aegis where, you know, Black and Yellow have an 11k gold lead. They just want to take these out of tier 2 towers, farm the map, and turn this 11k gold lead into like a, you know, 15 to 20k gold lead over the next 3 to 4 minutes. Well, it's, uh, it's feeling like a much more closely contested game than I was expecting. You know, the Sad Boys team has looked so good... And particularly, I think that the times when Sad Boys have looked the best is when they've been playing some of these teams like Black and Yellow that 
haven't been quite as high skill. They they tend to not lose games sort of by overextending or anything. And I don't know. It's a it's a weird dynamic to have. Um, yeah. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I know what you mean. They play very solid Dota where they haven't let these teams get into games, but that's not been the case here. Flea is just making setup after setup happen with the help of Jubei. These black and yellow supports are really impressing right now. Here, two tower is going to fall simultaneously, though. It's bottom where DNM, after being tipped three times by the enemy team, uh, is getting a little bit of split push action going on and pressure towards mid, but they have the gyrocopter BKB now. Still not an easy game by any stretch of the imagination, but look at black and yellow. They're up on the high ground. They, they've caught themselves Moo rolling in with the Rubik. They kill him off as well. And now lift up on a gyro. Scott BKB might need to pop it here. We'll see as they're going to burn through Yamsun's first light. What happens next now? He is going to try and back out of there. Remnant going Stop to connect. The yeah, it looks like he should be able to walk away, no problem. Yeah, coming into a fight seems really dangerous. He can live with the BKB, and level three reincarnation has a very low cooldown. Uh, th this is again that situation again. that happened in their A-team game where they went too far and black and yellow got punished. Will it happen again? They kill off one, BPD, buying back now. They throw out the missile, Fear still hanging on to that BKB, waiting to run in. So now, turn towards the Rax. Zero getting pummeled here. Needs to be careful about his movement. Roll in, completely whiffed there. Snaking, not able to catch him, but the coil afterwards onto everybody. That Aegis burned through once. They do have reincarnation from Yemson. He's gonna come back up with BKB. PPD stun, die back for him. Now Fear pops the BKB, turns to fight, but likewise, they have it on a couple others. They're trying to take down that troll. Can they kill him off in time? They will bring him down. Low. Anything else left in the tank now? Snaking tries to get out will not be able to as the silence is there on the zero able to get that timber chain away and they managed Flea in to the trees out of there. <laughs> oh, is he he's just playing around in the trees he's got a blink dagger oh my god flea he goes deeper into the trees there's still a battle going on his fear is getting taken down the rest of his team oh. was focusing on flea and they take he down the gyro he chased too far oh, oh and the wraith king it's again this low cooldown reincarnation he died tw he used reincarnation twice already and it's up for a third time because of how long that fight went for they're just playing around these cooldowns so well again it's it's this very confident play from black and yellow i think you know most teams there aren't going to go for that rax push with an aegis they're just going to take out of towers and farm the map but they just want to you know put the nail in the coffin and take game one against sad boys they force them to take a bad fight and sad boys have to chew through some buybacks just to hold their rax I, that was so wild again because like it looks like things are you know gonna go okay but then half the team goes and chases flea down on the south side which again we talked about you need to do that to kill the rubik and sort of yeah. win the engagements but uh, while that happens a little bit of zigging when they maybe should have zagged and fear gets picked off flea is just so farm right now we will right, get caught bottom they're angry <laughs> <laughs> they have enough. oh is he gonna live I don't no know. Way. He's got astral. He's got astral. He had the green. It doesn't matter. Okay. He's living through it. Oh okay, my god. DNM tries to chase. He's just so angry. He wants this kill so He's badly. Now. And jumping away, trying to escape. Flee. Well, they managed to find DNM. No. But the mad Rubik lives through it all. I see you, Flee. That is impressive stuff. Gets Grief back up. He is just playing out of his mind right now. I mean, it's it's so much fun to play Rubik in these situations where you're this farmed. He's out farming the offlane OD on the other team. Just making all kinds of swaggy plays. Banishment used now. Set up. Remnant, it's ready. It's there. And you come on out. We got a surprise for you. Fear gets completely destroyed. No buyback. Black and yellow. Now it's taking high ground yet again. Another banish there. They've got Sandy's Eclipse back up in 15 seconds, but with the Aegis already claimed, but having reincarnation, I don't know if they can just drop it onto black and yellow. Yeah. Look how tanky this troll is. He's got Mage Slayer and a hood. He's going all in on magic. He says, who needs BKB when you can just tank your way through things? He's got an Eternal Shroud queued que up. He is so goddamn tanky. I love this troll build. And Flea trying to look for the lift afterwards. DNM going to get that Yules. Remnant connecting. Good save coming from Moo. That was so needed, but they might still be in trouble. As Rax are dropping. This is the second set. Jubei 
Steps in a bit far as the Banish comes out. Remnant going to connect onto Mu. He takes that one for his team. The lift up afterwards and then the back away. Man, I I don't know. Rubik against some of these heroes is just so insane. Yeah. They, yeah, having Rubik playing into OD is just always really difficult. And it just feels like they're a better OD because they've got the Void Spirit to go with it as a follow-up to the Astral. Whereas Mu, yeah, he's got this Meteor Hammer, but there isn't really much else of a combo for his Astral setup. Fear lifted again. Everything dropped on him, but gets saved by the OD. Much needed there. Fear turns, pops his BKB, tries to run away. And they will be able to get the lift up onto Zero. Yamsun still Different living through save. this one. Yeah. They got BKB the entire time. Snake King. He's trying to get out of there, just barely manages to escape. They turn on Namu and he's gonna explode. They managed to find one kill through with the impetus coming from PPD, but the chase will continue. Jubei has another remnant, remnant to connect now. That is the poor old pug. Everybody dying, black and yellow in this game number one are completely owning them. They buy back on Namu, maybe one final hurrah here. Because I do not see how they hold on to this one as the turn on of fear saved again from Mu. The much needed buyback. The BKB out now. The turn on a Gyrocopter. Four staff won't save you this time. Triple kill for Yamsun. A lift up with the Yule Scepter. They're buying back on literally everybody that they can. But with the Remnant down, Raya focusing on buildings. They're going to blow up Mu. Kill him off as well. And GG is called. Man, Black and Yellow came to play today. It was just such a impressive win with what looked like to me a weaker draft they had no playmaking options in the early to mid game they just had to weather this sad boy storm like sad boys was just roaming around the map trying to set up kills they were up i think seven kills to one at one point maybe even more they had the freedom to take every tier one out of tower and all black and yellow could do was sit back and farm they had to wait for the wraith king radiance they had to wait for troll to get his ag scepter in some levels and it's a timbersaw like none of these heroes make plays none of these heroes get kills none of them push towers until later on but once they got their items that's when they just flipped a switch and said go and just played some great dota really good stuff um yeah and i think again it's important to remember you can't ever count out one of these na teams like this is the team that we've been saying the entire time uh for black and yellow there's a chance but also there's a very clear skill divide that feels like they exist there and um, I don't know, Sad Boys maybe being a little bit too cavalier with the play or well, what ended up happening, but they're going to have to come up with some answers in game number two for sure. Absolutely. I mean, I think they had the right understanding that they had to play aggressive. They just did, did so in like maybe the wrong ways. They were a bit slow taking the towers. They weren't really contesting the enemy jungle. They just gave too much breathing room to black and yellow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for game number one of our second series of the day. Still more to come in just a little bit. We're going to head to a break. When we come back, the panel's going to break down the action and maybe prescribe some remedies for how to solve the problems going on. Uh, back in just a bit.